So I'm in the offices of Duo, a design and architecture practice here in West London. In fact, Duo are neighbours of mine. Uh, we share, we don't share a building, uh, whereas I'm down in the bowels of the building in my windowless, airless little bunker up here on the swanky second floor. We have Venetian blinds and potted plants. I think, I think their rent might be a bit more than mine, at least I hope it is. Uh, I'm here to help them out with some shells, like all of us, we expand to fill about 115% of the space we have. And I'm sure moving some stuff off a desk and off a work surface onto some shelves is something we can all get to grips with. Um, the shelving system we've chosen for this is, here in the UK at least, it's a, called a Spur Twin Slot Shelving System. You might know it by another brand name, but it's a, a pretty common the world over. Uh, it's steel uprights that are fixed to the wall and steel shelf brackets that slot in so they're height adjustable. It's pretty robust, it's a little utilitarian, um, but with a little more careful treatment of both the material and how we affect it, we can make it a bit more palatable for either domestic or office use. One of the things we're going to do is use a, a nice 3 quarter inch 18 mil birch ply for the uh, shelving and we're leaving the cut edges exposed but just putting a slight profile on it just to soften it down a little bit and we'll have a wax finish to give it a nice handle and a nice feel and we'll notch it around the uprights so the shelves sit nicely into the, uh, into the wall. I've made a full-size shelf template in MDF and I'm offering it up against the brackets so that I can mark the position of the uprights and their depth. Back in the workshop I've cut the notches quickly by hand and now I'm back on site to check the fit. Which frankly is pretty good, so it's back to the workshop to get cracking. Using our template as a guide we can mark up the shelves for the notches and cut them to size, taking into account the outer square walls at the same time. You know, when I cut the notches out of the template, I just did that with a hand saw and a, a, a coping saw and I finished it off with the chisel to get it nice and clean. Um, but for cutting the notches out of the actual shelves, I've been sort of agonising a little bit as to what's the best approach for that. Um, the, the problem is, of course, these are, this is the finished material, so you want it to look quite nice. So you need a good clean cut on there. Now I could enlarge the notches in the template a little bit and, and cut them out with a, a, a flush trimming bit, a template bit, you know, with a, with a bearing guide. Um, but then, because you've got the corner, you've either got to finish the corners by hand or just accept that it's going to be a little bit wider, a little bit deeper than perhaps you might want. Uh, you could do it by hand with a coping saw. <sighs> a lot of work uh, for me, because I'm lazy. Um, what else could you do? You know, you could use a jigsaw, it's too big for a bandsaw, I don't have a bandsaw. You could use a jigsaw, but then, you know, how do you protect the top surface from splintering unless you use a down cut blade? I don't know, don't know about you, but every time I use a down cut blade, they seem really, really slow. They almost burn their way through. Maybe I just need some new ones or something. And then it occurred to me that I've already got the perfect tool for doing this. The trouble is, I think of it as a loose tenoning machine, but Festor's Domino is actually a slot mortiser. That's what it does. You can vary the size of the slot, you can vary the depth of the slot, and you can vary the distance of the slot away from the fence. So actually, using this to cut that back slot will be perfect. I can you know, hand cut or whatever jigsaw the edges out, it's that back cut that's the tricky part. Um, now, obviously, depending on how far back away from the fence you want your cut to be, that could be a little bit tippy. Um, so what you can get, and I bought one of these a while back and I'm not entirely sure I've used it, but it's a little uh, plate, a little foot that attaches to the, can you see that? Oh, there we go. That attaches to the, uh, attaches to the bed of the domino and then that gives it a little bit more support. Now it's still not super sturdy but it's way better than it was. With the shelves firmly clamped to a backing board to prevent breakout I'm marking the centres of the notches then using my domino mortiser to make the plunge cuts as this produces a nice clean finish.
Even with the domino at its widest setting, I can't quite cover the full width of the notch, so I'm shifting the domino either side of the centre mark to widen the cut, until we have it covered. With our template clamped on top of the shelf, I'm using this partly as a guide and partly as a cutting strip to avoid breakout on the shelf surface while I complete the notches with the jigsaw, and I'm using a simple square against the front edge of the shelf to keep the jigsaw cuts nice and straight. You know, I know some guys love their benches, but I know workbench is one of those kind of rites of passage, <clears throat> something I've never really done. Um, these old things, these are, I treat these like a bit of a consumable, you know, they're, they're going to be replaced pff, over the course of a year or two or three or whatever, especially with this car. Um, but the, one of the reasons for that is, I mean, I've, I've got to fix for the next little piece, I've got to fix this little block of uh, birch ply flush against this one. And I'm going to clamp it down and I don't have a bench dog hole. And now I do. So one of the things I find quite useful to do is if I'm coming around, uh, excuse me, if I'm rounding over an edge like this, when it comes to the back edge, it can be, unless you want that sort of stop chamfer kind of look, uh, it can be quite hard to, to judge that because you, you know, you've got to get the, the cutter just to stop cutting right there. And one of the things I find quite useful is to just clamp a scrap of material so the edge is nice and flush. And then you can run the router along that and straight onto your workpiece. We've got a little uh, round over bit in the router there. It's a, it's a bearing guided bit so it's going to stay uh, nice and constant and you're probably thinking well that's a ridiculously large router to use for a, a little cut like this and I wouldn't disagree uh, what I would say is though what I found is that the you know the bigger the router the bigger the base and when you're coming along one edge like this especially around a corner having more base that you can plant on that workpiece makes a big difference you can come all the way along you can bring it in and then when you get to the corner the pressure's on your left hand to keep it steady and you're just going to steer it round with your right and if you do need to come back if you didn't quite get that corner just right it's easy to do you can just bring it back in right against the corner and carry on with your cut um, it is a bit of overkill but in many ways it's it's safer and easier to use a big honking thing like this than a little sort of trim router I find. After routing all the edges, each shelf gets a good sanding over, working all through the grits to finish with P320. Then a quick wipe over with a tack cloth, before applying a beeswax finish with a stockinette cloth, working the wax well into the plywood, with special attention to the cut edges to really make the laminations stand out. After leaving the wax to settle overnight, we can give the shelves a gentle buffing with a soft cloth in the morning before taking them upstairs and settling them into their new home. Well that's it, my work here is done, our screwdriver toting architects 
are going to screw these uh, shelves down to brackets themselves. I'm sure they'll do a fine job. Uh, and really, it's just a question of um, a little bit of attention to detail, which can elevate something from a fairly simple little set of shelves to something that's a little bit nicer, notching uh, out for the uh, shelf uprights, just a little bit of profiling on the shelf edge and a bit of wax to give it a nice handle. Um, there we go. It's a nice, simple, easy little job. Very close to home for me as well. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you might have learned something. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it freely amongst your friends and do consider subscribing. Then you'll be notified whenever I post something new. But from here in West London, big thank you and a shout out to Duo Architects as well for both the job and letting me film here. Uh, that's it for this week. I hope to see you again next time. Take care.